Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another off-season recap. I believe this is week 10. We've got plenty of teams up on the board, and unfortunately, not too many organizations to go with that. We will talk about it. First of all, Gen G, I know I talked about this last week, should be able to stop drawing this logo now, but they have officially signed Rettles, Magic Bear, Cheese, Raw Greg. I believe they signed Kev Pert as well. They have the whole former Luminosity squad, that RMC squad, and the team itself, specifically Rettles, announced on Twitter that they will be representing the United States of America at the FIFA E World Cup. So both those bits of news became official this week. Excited to see what this RMC squad does with Genji. I think the content coming out of them is going to be top tier. They had, they being Genji, had apparently Jack last year, who is great for content and clicks and drives and Rettles very much has a fan base as well. So curious to see where that leads. Next, I've drawn an exit sign. And I hope there's not confusion. Gen G is not exiting. Normally, you go this way. And, like, you know how the board works at this point, hopefully. But Gen G is not exiting. There are many orgs that are exiting, however. Um, several have announced either their departure or it's been rumored that they are heading out. First off, Resolve. There was a Chalked Cast episode this week. It was the round table. If you pay attention to Chalkcast, they've been talking for a while about getting a bunch of org owners on. This is the week that they did that. They had Gen G's Arnold, who I believe is the CEO of Gen G. They had Jeff from Williams Results, COO. They had um, Brendy from Chiefs Esports Club. And they had Farah. Yes, yeah, no Farah. But Jeff from Resolved announced that they probably will not be having a team at the start of the 2025 season or probably for the RLCS of the 2025 season. They're still wanting to invest in Rocket League, but given the current climate, it doesn't make sense for them to be in it. Team Endpoint also announced on Twitter something very similar, how they said they actually met their goals. They weren't, you know, Team Endpoint wasn't necessarily expecting to be a land contending team. They wanted to be top 10 in Europe. They achieved that, but based on, you know, again, financial projections, they don't think it's worth it to stay in Rocket League for the next season. Uh, the next one's more of a rumor. Uh, it was posted on the subreddit. I believe it's probably set on Achilles stream. I didn't watch the clip myself, to be honest. But it doesn't sound like Moist is going to have a squad to start the season either. They dropped their Pirates on a Boat squad pretty quickly after the season ended, and we really haven't heard anything from the organization itself other than theorizing and a little bit of rumors. But it doesn't appear that Moist is going to be in the scene at the start of the season. A large part of this is that also announced this week is that Achilles is hearing that sponsors will not be allowed on decals for the 2025 season. This is stuff like, you know, G2 partnered with Adidas. And so on G2's away decal for like the 2022-23 season, I believe they had Adidas on that decal. And because they're allowed to, you know, Adidas is allowed to put their brand inside G2's decal. It gets, you know, sponsorship revenue and is one of the biggest ways for orgs to earn money. Now, last year, I believe uh, G2's had, G2 had Stride on their logo. Um, Space Station has had um, Steel Series on their logo before. It, it's been a big revenue earner to be able to put, you know, sponsors on those away decals, and it appears that that's going away for this next season. A lot of orgs are upset by this. A lot of orgs are f trying to fight against this. Achilles says that, that it's not necessarily a done deal yet, and that maybe the people in command at Epic can be convinced to allow sponsors on decals still. So. We're still pushing for this. There's been a massive discussion. If you paid attention to that roundtable, there's been a massive discussion on the difference between Rocket League and Fortnite, as it appears that Epic is trying to take the esport in the direction of what Fortnite went, and everyone in the Rocket League community is crying out that that's not what's going to be good for Rocket League. So hopefully that trend continues. I really recommend watching that Chalked Cast episode. I think that's probably the most important one to date. So Loud. If you guys forgot Loud was in the scene, I'd no offense i don't blame you they picked up a team for the esports world cup and then the esports world cup really wasn't much of anything um they picked up that old hero based squad of sad drops and klaus and this week they officially released their roster not sure if they're going to be the organization loud is going to be in it for 2025 season if they are it will be a completely different squad i assume because all three of the players are on different teams for a land happening in south america there's the login championships i believe it's called it will be happening on November 30th. I hope to do a video about roster changes in South America before that land happens. But all three of those players are on different teams. I know Drops is teaming up with Swift, which is kind of exciting. Also with Brad. I'm blanking on where the other two are, to be honest. But 
it looks like the loud players are also going their different ways as Sam starts their roster shuffle. For Team BDS, this is kind of following up on the a bit from last week. The Take the Throne land was canceled due to some hateful comments spread by the BDS owner. Uh, the BDS owner, Patrice Bilodes Belberk. I apologize if I mispronounced that. Uh, but he's no longer on the Team BDS board of directors. Um, he was the one who made those comments. All of the other French orgs like Vitality, Gentlemates, Common Core withdrew from the land because of it. And BDS has taken appropriate action. So it is a little bit interesting because he's the owner and a lot of the funding came from him. And so I'm not necessarily sure what happens financially for Team BDS. But this is very similar to the G2 Carlos situation where Carlos was like the owner of G2. The face correlated with G2. And then he went out partying with Andrew Tay and said, I'm allowed to party with whoever the heck I want to. And then went completely off of the deep end. And G2 separated ties from him. G2, obviously, was going to be fine. They're a big enough organization that they can get away with that. BDS, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, especially considering that the BDS does come from Bilo de Spellbrook, believe it or not. But I do believe that the board directors have made the correct decision here, and I'm curious to see what their next steps are. They do have plenty of valuable assets. They're still in the LEC, which is League of Legends for Europe. So I don't think the BDS org is going to disappear anytime soon. I think... Making this decision is one of the first steps into ensuring that actually happens. Luminosity. This wasn't on Twitter. This wasn't really anywhere. This was a rumor that was uh, that was still said by Achilles. It was on the Discord. He didn't plan on making a big statement about it. Um, but he also didn't care if it got screenshotted or shared elsewhere. So on the elsewhere today. They're expected to field an APAC roster. So... Similar to what we saw the Pioneers do when they went over to sign an OCE roster. Uh, Pioneers, in an attempt to be known on the international stage of Rocket League, signed one of the best three OCE squads. And, I mean, they showed up on plenty of international stages after that. So, I'd say it really worked for their brand, despite the fact that they're going back to North America now. Looks like Luminosity is going to be the next organization who attempts to do that. There are plenty of unsigned teams in APAC. There were two main ones last year without... Elevate and Gladiators. I'm not sure if there's going to be roster changes there because Realize is still teamless. Maybe Tho decides to stay in APAC. Maybe ZPS decides to stay in APAC. Truth be told, I have no idea what kind of changes are going on in that area. But Luminosity does, does really have the pick of whoever they want. So I'm assuming they're going to pick up what's projected to be the best, if not one of the two best APAC squads for the next season. Because Luminosity would not be doing this if it wasn't a move to get to be on land every single time. And then I have this jobless logo. That doesn't necessarily mean it's about the jobless team. It just means that all the teams are jobless now. It was kind of a meme with that uh, former Moist squad of Iso, Oli, and Rezzy last season where they went under the name Jobless for the second split as well as the Shift Summer League. But considering how many orgs are exiting, like we have this sign up here, that means there's a lot of teams now looking for organizations. Now, no guarantee that there won't be organizations to come and pick these teams up, but as of now, they're just teams looking for organizations, and a lot of them officially announced their intentions this week. So I have all the players, I have a coach if it is known, and then I have in parentheses the region that they're going to be competing in. One of the first ones is Cash Toxic Smokes. They'll be coached by Andy the Mandy. Uh, this also comes after Andy and Toxic were released from Team Endpoint. Uh, Team Endpoint, as I mentioned up here, exiting the scene, but Cash and Smokes looks like they're going to be teaming up with Toxic. Um, they're going to be playing in Europe, as all things indicate. Uh, the next one is two-thirds of that old space station roster. Hawks are in Chicago. They are sticking together. And it looks like they will be teaming with Kofor. Now, originally, it looked like Nolly and Kofor were going to be a duo. And it also looked like Wavy was going to get that third spot. It looked like that nolly Kofor duo was very solid, and now it has fallen through. So truth be told... If anyone's like, if I've announced that anyone's a duo, don't assume that's necessarily going to stay the case until announcements come out or, more importantly, organization contracts are signed because really anything can happen until roster lock, as we've seen two duos split up quite literally this week. Personally, I'm excited to see Hawks and Chicago still together. Is Kofor as good as LJ one for one right now? No, but 
I think this team could still be on that bubble contending for land. I think Hawks are in Chicago. Chicago really proved his worth at the World Championship. He had a phenomenal tournament there. Hawks are, I still believe, is criminally underrated. If Kofor can really blossom and develop, this is a team that is challenging for land spots in North America. Now they got Fireburner as their coach. That raises the question of what the heck is happening with Garrett G because I figured that Fireburner and Garrett G would stick together. Maybe that was more because they were both under contract to NRG, but Fireburner coaching the squad, also a solid pick there. A disappointing one, to be honest. Lunar, Forky, and Yukio will be teaming up in SSA. I believe the rumor is that they are going to be heading down there to team, but because we don't have any import rules, that means anyone can go and play from any region and... Unfortunately, it looks like this is the team that's going to be doing it for SSA. So it's going to be a challenge for your Limitless squad to contend with this team. Lunar played in APAC last season, made a final, then proceeded to kick a guy beyond me. Forky, mechanical wizard, played in OCE for a bit from North America, was like a content creator for power, but never actually been, you know, NA caliber player. And then Yukio, you'll probably know him from his days on Dignitas, uh, he made top four at the World Championship, won DreamHack Leipzig, I believe. So Yuki is a pretty well-known player. And I think he made some main events last year as well. Back into Europe, we got two more teams there. You have Atomic and Tox are still teaming up. They will be teaming up with Raziers next year, playing in Europe, looking for an organization to represent, as all the previous three are as well, I'm sure. And then this one was not official and is very much subject to change. All four of these were announced by the players themselves this one wasn't this was announced by like an ssa news source so could be subject to change but i think it's pretty pretty solid uh this one is a rumor that is very much subject to change right now the joyo archie duo is rumored to be teaming with oli uh achilles has also added that rise news should be coming in the next couple of days we're not really sure a lot of people thought rise was going to fit in here myself included don't really know where rise is going to end up going so this squad Looking to team up in Europe. I think they're top five for sure. So would be shocked to not see these guys at the World Championship. I know a lot of people would probably think that Rise is better. But I think Oli is also one of those players who's kind of criminally slept on. And so if these guys feel like that's the roster that fits, I really think they'll be contending for lands. So all that being said, that's all I got for this week. Hopefully you all enjoyed. I've got hopefully a South America roster breakdown as we head into that login championship plan. And there's plenty more going on in the Rocket League offseason that I will be talking about. Specifically, uh, FIFA E predictions will be coming up soon as well. So hopefully you all enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers. Hello, everyone. Post-video Martian here. Had to interject as I recorded the whiteboard portion of this video on Friday night. And about an hour after that, Garrett G announced his retirement from competitive play. He's been playing on NRG for about eight years now, uh, but he actually joins the organization as a co-owner now. So... Huge props to him. He's an absolute legend of the game. Um, I quite literally, the, the pair of glasses I got were inspired by him. I figured I looked similar enough and thought he looked good in those glasses. So I picked out essentially the same pair for me. So Garrett G obviously had a huge impact on a lot of people in the scene. And it's always tough to see someone's retirement, but glad he's going to be sticking around and being a co-owner for NRG, still will be involved in content. Congrats on a great career to him. Either way, catch you guys next time.